And West Texas crude rising today, touching levels not seen since early May, while Brent crossed above $80 per barrel after that cool inflation data. Barron's even making the case today that oil is finally bottoming out. Joining us now, Lorenzo Simonelli, chairman and CEO of energy giant Baker Hughes. Lorenzo, great to have you on the show. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks a lot, Morgan. Great to be with you. And I'm here in Vancouver at LNG 2023. So nice to be with you. Uh, and I want to talk to you about LNG. But first, just more broadly, I mean, energy tends to be cyclical. Oil field services tend to be, or at least investors tend to look at it as an early indicator of where markets are heading. From your vantage point, where are we in the cycle? Well, I think you've seen that there's been underinvestment in the sector over the course of the last few years. And as we look out at Baker Hughes, we see a positive cycle that's a multi-year cycle. As you look at international demand, it continues to grow. As you look at LNG growth, it continues to be there. As China rebounds and as some of the developing markets continue to consume more, we see a very positive cycle for the next few years. Why are rig counts in the U.S. coming down then? Well, if you look at North America, it's more of a transactional and obviously it's sensitive to the price and the volatility. But I think you've got to look at it from a macro perspective, what's happening around the world. There's obviously efficiencies in North America, but globally demand is, continues to be robust. And as we look at China, we look at other areas, and you may have seen from Monday what Fatih Barol said from the IEA, we continue to see robust demand for the next few years, especially from the developing and China areas. Yeah, and I realize you're in a quiet period ahead of earnings later this month, but just to dig into that a little deeper, um, then, then does that mean that you see more opportunity internationally versus U.S.? Yes, we've said that, uh, you know, we expect international to grow mid-double digit and that continue next year. As you look at the Middle East, you look at Latin America, you look at areas of Asia, we continue to see robust growth. And Baker Hughes is more exposed from an international perspective than a North America. Mm -hmm. So we've got good visibility to what we're seeing out there. And we feel very positive about the outlook over 23 and 24. Yeah. And Baker Hughes, as analysts point out, B of A, for example, today tend to be less exposed to energy market cyclicality writ large. you got a big backlog. You do have that LNG exposure, which tends to be a, a longer cycle. Given the fact that you are at this LNG conference, your outlook for natural gas. Natural gas is being better understood. And uh, having been at the conference, I think the narrative is changing where people really see natural gas being a base load for the future and LNG continuing to grow. As you know, we've said that uh, we see this year between 65 MTPA to 115 MTPA being FID. There's lots of good customer discussions. There's lots of activity. And we see this going into 24 and 25 as well. I think as you look at the last year, there's a realization that natural gas and also LNG plays a key role in solving the energy trilemma of sustainability, security, and affordability. And we're thankful that we're participating in it. Yeah, it speaks to the secular en energy transition and the role that natural gas is going to play as a bridge fuel. Um, supply chain. How is that, how is that uh, playing out for Baker Hughes right now? What does that mean in terms of costs and inflation, especially on a day where everybody is focused on CPI? True. And again, we look at this from a long cycle perspective. Clearly, there's been some inflationary pressure. There have been some supply chain hurdles that we've overcome. But as we look at the rest of 23 and also going into 24, we're managing those supply chain constraints and we've effectively put those into order. And also, we're starting to see some areas where inflation is abating. And again, we continue to be constructive on the outlook as we go forward. You've also been making a lot of tech investments. Um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about this partnership with C3AI. Um, it was the subject of an investigative report by CNBC recently, an investor lawsuit raising questions about that partnership. Are you still committed to working with C3AI? And what is your response to all of the scrutiny that that partnership has received in recent months? Look, clearly, C3AI can speak for itself, and uh, we as a partner of C3AI see artificial intelligence as a key proponent of driving efficiency and productivity in the oil and gas and energy sector. And we continue to look for ways for optimizing solutions for our customers, and we think that AI is a critical component to the future and continue to explore different ways to bring that to the market. 